Welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's springtime here and that means it's showtime. I love going to shows, been doing it uh, for about 22 years now. Um, I really enjoy them and uh, I always load up an engine on a trailer and then that's the one that I show all summer so I don't have to keep unloading it all the time. Uh, this year I'm going to be taking my four horse uh, portable mogul. Um, we're working on an eight horse uh, for restoration and in comparison the eight horse weighs about 28 2900 pounds and this four horse weighs about 1100 uh, it, uh, it is on a correct skid and um, it is a running engine I bought it uh, from a collector that was downsizing about 10 years ago and it was a running engine then it did need uh, rings so I took the piston out and put rings in it and um, that was about all I did to it. I am still figuring out how to run it. So um, let's go take a look at it and see if we can get it to run. Well, here it is, four horse mogul. I'm sitting in my very messy shop. I've been uh, kind of busy and I haven't been cleaning it up very well. So uh, let's just kind of do a walk around on this. Um, I don't have a tripod right now to hold on to that's small enough so uh, sorry for the shaky video but uh, we'll try to make do with what we got here so these moguls were made from 1914 to 1918 uh, by International Harvester they were actually built in the McCormick Center in Chicago Illinois and they are a kerosene engine that means that they run on kerosene fuel, they will run on gasoline, and that's what I run them on. But uh, back in that time, kerosene was considerably cheaper because it was less refined than gasoline. So uh, I believe the pricing was that a gallon of kerosene was about uh, four cents and a gallon of gasoline was about eight. So quite a bit of savings there uh, back then uh, for running on kerosene. Um, they are throttle governed engines so they fire every time up on the, the compression stroke um, as opposed to uh, like my Galloway or my uh, Reeves engine that I did a video on that are hit and miss. So these moguls have really good speed regulation and they were used for power generation and uh, line shafting that was needing uh, uh, good speed regulation. Uh, they were kind of expensive. Um, a typical, maybe a cost would be, you could buy an engine uh, from Associated that was a six horse engine for about $125. And one of these moguls uh, would run you seven or $800. So quite a bit more expensive. That was a lot of money then. And um, there just aren't many of them around. Uh, they are a good running engine. They run very smooth and are just fun to watch running. So uh, let's take a look at uh, the key parts here and um, then we'll see if we can get it to run. So uh, it is a side shaft engine and that is what uh, this shaft here is. Um, it runs from the, the crank uh, back and, and to the front of the engine. It does several things. It uh, runs the governor, it powers the governor, it does uh, the valve lobe cam operation, uh, it fires the magneto, um, it runs the rockers, and um, it does quite a bit of things. It also, on the back, um, it also runs the fuel pump and it's kind of hard to see there but it's uh, right there that's the fuel pump it runs it on this eccentric here and um, this is a recirculating system so there is a bowl here um, right here and the fuel comes up from the fuel pump in this small line and it returns to the tank in this larger line. So there's an overflow. So it has a, a reservoir there. So it is an overflow system. Uh, up top, we have a couple of controls. Uh, this top one here 
uh, diverts air from the top for cold air or from the side here and this tube goes down to the manifold and pulls hot air off of the exhaust manifold. That actually helps with uh, vaporization, especially with uh, kerosene fuel. Um, it even helps with gasoline because these, these uh, mixer setups are not very efficient and, and um, a hot air flowing through them really helps. Uh, the next one here is the choke. Uh, to the left is start, which chokes the engine and then you have a run position that has that uh, butterfly completely open. Um, below that is the starting bowl. So with kerosene, uh, you would start it on gasoline. You'd fill this bowl up with gasoline, run it with the needle here for setting it, and uh, run the engine, get it warmed up, and then you would switch over to the kerosene fuel. Um, one thing I've learned about these moguls, at least the ones that I own, is that the fuel needs to be absolutely to the top of this bowl for it to start. Otherwise, it won't pick it up. You just can't roll it over fast enough to get it. Okay, so this is the intake valve. Uh, it's an intake cage uh, for the uh, fuel mixture in from the carburetor. Uh, one interesting thing about this carburetor is um, there's two needles here. One is for the fuel, which would be the kerosene or gasoline. And this one is actually a water injection. So it will pull water from the hopper um, and pull it in and mix it in with the fuel and it will go in the engine. Um, they did that quite commonly with the kerosene engines. It actually increased power uh, considerably and uh, you would burn it about one to one. So if you burned a gallon of uh, kerosene, you would mix in a gallon of water. Uh, the water actually doesn't burn. It just turns into steam. And uh, one thing is uh, when, when you're done for the day, you want to shut this valve off and let it run a little bit uh, before you shut it off. Otherwise, that water in the cylinder would stick the piston and you'd have a stuck piston the next day and have to deal with that. So. Um, moving down here, this is the magneto. Uh, there's quite a complex linkage here that uh, runs the uh, trip for the igniter. This is the igniter right here. This is what they did before they had spark plugs. This is a low tension mag, so it's um, below a thousand volts. I think uh, these mags put out about 120, 130 volts. They will bite you if you touch them, but they won't uh, uh, bite you as hard as like a high tension spark plug mag that's putting out 10, 20,000 uh, volts. Uh, here's the front of the side shaft. Uh, it's an eccentric. This eccentric actually runs this uh, magneto trip and the trip for all of the igniter. So um, um, moving on here. Um, We've got a, a mechanical lubricator up top. This lubricator runs off of the side shaft as well with that lever and has a three output uh, oiler system. Uh, two of them go to the, each uh, crank main and then the other one uh, comes up here to the front and uh, runs the, the oil to the piston. So. Uh, one thing about these moguls is um, there's a ring oiler on the crank and the, the uh, clutch side um, oil system on that for that main will drain into that ring oiler. It'll sling it around and that's how the rod gets oil. These cranks, these crank cases are closed, but there is no oil in them. Um, the oil that gets in there actually drains out and it drains out uh, down here in this um, drain baffle here and just runs out. So uh, even though it is closed, it's not like an engine today where it would have closed system. So we have uh, a fuel tank here, a recirculating system, like I said. So this is the intake to the uh, fuel pump. And then this uh, rubber line here is the return from the uh, mixer. And then uh, we have an, uh, a reproduction, a uh, very good reproduction, built uh, skid for it. Uh, this is dimensionally correct. It was made to the same prints that I made my uh, eight horse uh, skid on. Uh, obviously the eight horse skid's uh, much bigger. 
but uh, it's, it's the same uh, principle, the same design. So, and then we have a very good reproduction uh, toolbox on the back here. And uh, inside of this, uh, just a few things like some belts and uh, uh, funnel and stuff like that. You, you would just have uh, tooling and oil cans, stuff like that. Um, and then on this other side, there isn't near as much going on. Uh, we do have a clutch, this hand clutch, and that's what you belt off of. The belt would run on this surface here, flat belt. And we'll be doing that at the show, hopefully, uh, running a counter shaft and running a Sturdeman number four blower. And uh, this is the hand wheel. The hand wheel is actually loose, and that's because it does actually turn with the crankshaft, but you can reach in here and stop it. And then you push this in or out if you want the clutch engaged or not. It's the way that works, and uh, we'll demonstrate that at the show. Um, moving up to the front here. On this side, um, you have a drain here for the water. I do have some water in that hopper, and this valve wants to leak a little bit, but hopefully it'll uh, tighten up. Then you have this uh, exhaust system here. It's actually a double uh, ported system here. Um, the exhaust flows through here, but there's also an intake on the bottom for air, and this is where it draws up the hot air, and it goes up here to the top and then over into the uh, carburetor there. So that's how that comes up. Uh, this part is actually kind of hard to get. Uh, a lot of them were broke and uh, just not replaced. So um, that's a pretty rare part to have on an engine. Uh, surprisingly enough, the other part that's pretty hard is the uh, um, breather that's on the back for the drain for the crankcase. That was taken off a lot of times too. So. Um, to start this engine, um, we would uh, go around and oil all the key points, um, fill this bowl up with uh, gasoline, clear the top, and then we would set it to start. And that would choke the engine, uh, start it on cold air, and then we would open this uh, needle valve a little bit. I'm still figuring out where it wants it. Sometimes I flood it. Um, we would also, very important here, we would retard this spark. So here is normal run. It's about five degrees uh, advanced on the timing. Uh, when this is down, it retards the spark by about five degrees. If you don't do that and it rolls over and starts, it'll kick back and uh, maybe break your hand. So we always make sure that that's down. And then the other thing that's on this side shaft is this uh, slide lever here. Um, that lever is for retarding the, the timing of the engine. So as this rolls around, um, you, you have this out here in the run position, uh, it gets normal compression. Uh, if this is in like that, then it uh, holds the exhaust valve open for about uh, two-thirds of the compression stroke, and that lowers the compression, makes it a lot easier to start. Um, it, uh, it will run uh, in that mode, but it has absolutely no power. So uh, when we start it, First thing we'll do after it gets running is slide this over, let it get full compression, and then we'll advance the spark and the engine will speed up. Um, it is setting on a trailer right now, so it is gonna bounce around a little bit. At the show, I'm gonna have it off of the trailer and on the ground and it'll run a lot better that way. So uh, let's see if we can get it to run.
And there it is, the uh, four horse mogul, ready for the show, I think. You never know about these old engines. Sometimes they just decide not to run at a show, but hopefully this year this one will run just fine. Um, I still haven't quite figured out what it wants starting wise, as you can see in my startup section there. I tend to flood it, so I'm just going to be working on that and dial it in. Uh, a couple of things I forgot to mention. Uh, one is the reason these things run so quiet is this muffler has, I think it's 68 parts in it. It has baffles and spacers in there all the way up the top of this muffler. and that makes it really quiet. Uh, the other thing is, is I uh, got the mogul hat here. This is a uh, rain deflector, uh, water deflector, whatever, on the intake. And uh, that's actually a very rare part too. A lot of those were uh, lost, misplaced, whatever. But this engine has that. So um, anyway, uh, uh, I'll do some more filming at the show and uh, hopefully everything runs good and uh, the weather cooperates and it's a good show this year but uh, if you like what we're doing here uh, like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next video